All right, today we're going to be learning how to multiply a number by 8 using a doubling strategy. So you'll know you're successful when you can derive your 8's facts using your 2's and 4's facts using the doubling strategy. Okay, and this works for any time that you have to multiply a number by 8. So whether that number be 3 times 8 or 243 times 8, this strategy will work. Okay, so we're going to review some vocabulary first. The first word we need to know today is double. Okay, and you first learned about doubles with addition in first and second grade. And doubling a number then meant adding the number twice, like 6 plus 6 or 7 plus 7. So you are doing it twice. So doubling is when you find twice the amount. And now that we're older, we're going to think about that twice as times 2. Okay. The other thing we're going to look at today is a raise. And this is a way to represent multiplication. Okay. Arranging things in a rectangle. Okay. And um, things are arranged in a rectangle using rows and columns. Rows go across. Columns go up and down. So you can see here that this is a 3 by 4 array. It has 3 rows and 4 columns. So the multiplication sentence that would um, represent this is 3 times 4. All right, so now that we have some background knowledge, let's get started. So our first example is 8 times 3. So we're going to be figuring that out. But first of all, before we start, I want you to think, close your eyes and visualize 8 times 3. What do you see? Okay, so now that you have a picture of what 8 times 3 might look like, 8 rows, 3 columns, we're going to get started on how we can solve that without having to skip count. Okay, so what do you see here? What multiplication could you write to represent this array? And I know this is not an 8 times 3 array, not yet at least. So pause the video and think about what do you see? What multiplication would represent this? Okay, welcome back. So hopefully you saw that this was something like a double 3, 3 and 3. And we can represent that as 2 times 3 is equal to 6. Okay, we have two rows of 3 for a total of 6 dots. So what do you see now? What multiplication could I write to represent this array? So I want you to pause the video to answer these questions. What do you see now? What multiplication could you write? All right, welcome back. Hopefully you noticed something that was similar about these. You can see kind of above this line is that two by three array. And below the line is the same exact thing. So we can see this. This array shows the double, the two, the double three doubled. We have the top, the double on the top, three and three, two times three is six but then we also have that on the bottom. So that's a double, double. And that represents my four fact, four rows of three. But Ms. Swadley, our problem was eight times three. Okay, I know, so we're getting there. So right now we've doubled three and then we doubled it again, but we're still not to eight rows yet. So now let's look at this one. So pause the video to answer these questions. What do you see? What multiplication could you write to represent this? All right, and welcome back. Did you notice, or, or are you noticing a pattern? We have two rows, four rows, eight rows. Two doubled is four, four doubled is eight. So this shows that double, double, remember this one, this 
this box, this middle box, is the double double. It's the, the three doubled and then doubled again. So this shows the double double, but it doubled it. So on the top is your double double, and on the bottom, you're doubling that. So we could say that is eight times three, which equals 24. Okay, so we can see two doubled is four, four doubled is eight. So that's why we doubled three is six, double six is 12, double 12 is 24. So this is a way we can kind of represent that. Okay, so coming back to that original question of what does eight times three mean? Well, we can think of it as when we see the eight, we're thinking double, 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 double. So three doubled is six, that's my times two fact. Double my times two fact gives me my times four fact. Doubling times four gives me times eight. So we can just see double, double, double when we think of eight. All right, let's try another example. This time we're gonna do eight times eight. So I see that eight again. I know I can use the strategy of doubling rather than skip counting. The skip counting by eight is not friendly. All right, so we're gonna start with this. What do you see? What multiplication would this represent? All right, hopefully you're seeing where the double is. There's eight on this row, and I double that underneath, so that is a double eight, which would be the same thing as two rows of eight, or eight doubled, two times eight is 16. All right, that's gonna help us as we build up to eight times eight. Okay, so now what do you see? In the purple one, what multiplication equation could you write to represent this array? Right, and hopefully you see, again, we have the two times eight on the top, the eight and doubled is on the top right there, but then we doubled the top. So we doubled, that's the original double is on the top, eight doubled is 16, and then we doubled that 16. So we can write that as, let me find it, there it is, four times eight, four rows of eight is 32. Two doubled is four, so I had two rows, now I doubled that, I have four rows. Each row has eight. So since I doubled the amount of rows, I doubled the amount of dots. So 16 dots doubled is 32 dots. I doubled the double. All right, but the problem isn't four times eight, it's eight times eight. So what do you see now? What multiplication equation could you represent this array? I want you to pause the video and answer the questions. Okay, welcome back. So we have our original doubling of eight. Eight and eight make 16. But then we doubled that. So we no longer have one double, we have two doubles, a top double and a bottom double. But then we're not done yet. We doubled that again. So four doubled is this four. That was my double double. Now I doubled that, okay? So I have um, the first two rows are my first double, then I doubled that, and then I doubled that whole top to make the exact same thing on the bottom. We can kind of think about it as symmetrical. So this shows eight rows of eight, which is equal to 64, because we took 32, four times eight, and we doubled the number of rows. So we had four rows of eight. Now we doubled that to have eight rows of eight. So we, since we doubled the number of rows, we have to double the number of dots. So 32 dots doubled is 64 dots. So we double, double, doubled the eight. All right, one last example. Oh. 
All right, oh, sorry. So here's a way to kind of represent it. I doubled it to get my times two fact, but I had to double my times two fact to get my times four fact, because two doubled is four. Then I had to double my four fact. Four doubled is eight, okay? And we could even extend this. If we wanted to know eight times, what do you think if I doubled again, what would be the times fact? Yeah, it would be eight times 16 if I had another one on here, because if we double eight, it would be times 16. Anyway, moving along, last example, eight times six, I see that eight again. So in place of eight, I'm gonna think double, double, double six. Okay, so we're gonna replace eight when we see it with double, double, double. All right, so here we go. What do we see? What multiplication represents this? Okay, hopefully you see six and six. So that's a six doubled or double six, which is two times six which means there are 12 dots. All right, but that's not the problem. The problem is eight, six, eight times six. This is only one double. All right, so now what do you see? And what multiplication represents this? It's not two times six anymore. We can see the two times six on top, but now there's a bottom part too. So this is my original double, but I doubled it on the bottom. I went from having, oops, I went from having two rows of six to having four rows of six. I doubled the number of rows. So I had to double the number of dots. So 12 doubled is 24. All right, so now what do you see? What multiplication equation could you write to represent this one? What happened here? Pause the video and answer the questions. All right, welcome back. So hopefully you saw, here was my first double. I doubled six, and then I doubled that, and then now I doubled that again. So I am showing here the double, double, but I doubled it down on the bottom. Okay, so this would be eight times six because we had four, four rows of six, and we doubled that to eight rows of six. So we doubled the amount of dots. So 24 dots doubled is 48 dots. Okay, so I wanna know how does knowing two times six help me solve four times six and eight times six? I want you to pause the video and answer that question. Okay. All right, and hopefully, welcome back. Hopefully you said something about that you, if I want to solve eight times six, I can start with two times six and double the six to get 12, double that and double again. All right, and quickly because I'm, we're running out of time here, I'm gonna get cut off. Um, here's how you could represent that. Doubling one time gives me my times two fact. Double two makes my four fact. Double four, four doubled is eight. So that's why we double, double, double. And this works on bigger numbers too. So anytime you see that eight, you can think double, double, double. So 36 times eight, double, double, double. 28 times 28. Okay, well I know eight, so I'm gonna double, double, double. D 28, double, double, double. All right, so to summarize, whenever you have a problem that reads times eight or eight times a number, you can use the doubling strategy to solve the problem quickly and efficiently. So just replace the eight with double, 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 whatever the other number is, and you will have your product.